tuned into Quick Charge, the high voltage podcast bringing you the top stories in electric vehicles and sustainable energy daily. And it's all powered by electric. Welcome to Quick Charge. It's July 30th, 2024, and I'm your host, Joe Boris. We're going to start today's news the same way we start off every day, talking about Tesla. Tesla is pushing a software fix to 1.8 million EVs to prevent the hood from flying open. That's right. Tesla issued a new safety recall on nearly 2 million vehicles. But the good news is that it's just a software fix, although an important one, as it will prevent the hood from flying open while driving. Tesla was first made aware of a problem with its hood latch in China earlier this year. It took a few months, but figured out it had an issue that could result in drivers not being notified that the latch wasn't properly closed before beginning to drive away. After a customer action opens the hood, the latch assembly may not detect an open condition and prevent driver notification of the hood open state when the vehicle is placed into drive. Following the findings in China, Tesla conducted investigations in Europe and North America and found the same problem and some warranty claims matching the problem. Quote, the subject population includes certain model year 2017 to 2024 Model 3 vehicles, manufactured between September 6, 2017 and July 15, 2024, equipped with a hood latch produced in China, as well as all delivered model year 13 to 24 Model S, model year 26 to 2024 Model X, and model year 2020 to 2024 Model Y vehicles. Tesla has already started to deploy the software fix to its fleet through the 2024.20.100 software update. You guys know I take every chance I get to make fun of Elon and his cars, but the reality is they are flipping fast. A new Tesla Model S Plaid record got set over the weekend. It was 8.56 second quarter mile. That is absolutely moving. If you look at all these times, this was posted to drag times here. New record, 8.56 at 162 miles an hour by Tesla Plaid Racing in a Tesla Model S Plaid. That 60-foot time, 1.349, is absolutely phenomenal. 554 in the eighth mile, moving. 129 miles an hour, absolutely moving. Look, there's no way to slice this other than to say this is an absolutely stupid fast car. It does this with zero emissions. Now, granted, this is a gutted car. This is a racing vehicle, no dashboard, missing a ton of parts. Not the kind of car that you would necessarily want to daily drive. But the fact that you can and the fact that it is this fast and still manages to be road legal, something that you can get through a drive through without popping cams and everything else, this is actually phenomenal. It was not that long ago, 2008, 2009, we were getting into nine seconds in Porsche turbos and Nissan GTRs and patting ourselves on the back, talking about how fast those cars were. Nothing like this. This is absolutely phenomenal. Big high five and props to everyone involved. And, uh, you know, to Tesla, too, because they've always been fast. They've always been aspirational brands. And that's something that I think other EV brands have picked up on. BYD, especially BYD, obviously a Chinese brand. They're really gunning hard for Tesla's EV crown. They are the largest producer of plug-in cars in the world. And they have just launched their first electric supercar. And its latest luxury brand is getting the Yang Wang U9. This is their hypercar solution. This is what they think an electric sports car should look like. And it is in production with deliveries slated to begin later this summer. With four advanced e-motors and nearly 1,300 horsepower, the U9 can get from 0 to 60 in about 2.3 seconds. To put that into perspective, Ferrari's twin-turbo V8 SF90 Stradale hits 0 to 60 in 2.5 while the Bugatti Chiron does it in 2.4. The upscale interior features BYD's latest software and connectivity tech with DI Link, DI Pilot. BYD says the U9 has, quote, the smartest supercar cockpit, complete with two LCD screens, a 10 and a quarter inch driver display, and a 12.3 inch infotainment display. Some models also include a 10 inch passenger screen, which is super annoying, but there is no denying that this thing has a bit of a look to it. Now, it is a little bit power rangery. It's a little reptilian. If you were raised in the 80s and 90s and you have a more subdued European sensibility, this is very much a design that would be criticized by like the Pininfarina faithful, the people who like it's how designs work. It's a little bit busy, but I think for the market that it plays in, which is going to be China, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, I think it's spot on. I think that's exactly what these customers want. And BYD absolutely nailed the look of this car. 
That's my opinion. If you don't think it can hold a candle to the Ferraris and Lotuses of yesteryear, if you think this is a modern look that blows those guys out of the water, either way, we want to hear about it in the comments. Definitely let us know. Now, with BYD working so hard to stop Tesla, who is working to stop BYD? That's a question that General Motors is asking, especially in developing markets throughout South America, Asia, Australia, et cetera, where it's being forced to compete with its budget brands, mainstream brands like Chevy against BYD. As GM is preparing to launch a new EV offensive in Latin America with Chevy's Blazer EV spearheading the new campaign in Brazil as GM looks to counter BYD and other surging Chinese brands in the area. Now, GM is not alone here. Toyota's sales are also sliding as aggressive price cuts by BYD and other Chinese makers take effect. Toyota's global sales fell more than 5% last month, partly driven by the impact of BYD's price cuts in key markets like China, Southeast Asia, even Japan. So BYD is definitely a force to be taken seriously, and they definitely have the attention of Tesla, Toyota, GM, the world's largest car brands. Now, when we talk about large car brands, when we talk about the big names in automotive, you have to think of the Ford F-Series and the F-150. That is the best-selling truck in North America prior to the Model Y. It was the best-selling vehicle in the world. It is still incredibly, incredibly popular, and obviously the Target that is going to be most vulnerable to being upset by a hot new EV from Tesla like the Cybertruck. But it is getting new life from Sunrun. Solar and storage provider Sunrun has launched the U.S.'s first vehicle-to-home power plant using customer-owned Ford F-150 Lightning electrical trucks capable of bi-directional charging. Now, bi-directional charging, that's technology that allows the energy inside an EV to go not only from the grid to the home to the EV, but from the EV back to the home, possibly back to the grid to be used in other homes. According to Sunrun, the setup can provide substantial energy resilience for homeowners, especially during power outages caused by severe weather events or grid failures. The U.S. Department of Energy awarded funding to Maryland's largest utility, Baltimore Gas and Electric Company, BGE, to create the EV virtual power plant. The utility partnered with Sunrun and three Sunrun customers in BGE service territory in a regulator-approved initiative. The customers each own Ford F-150 Lightnings, as well as Ford Charge Station Pro and home integration systems sold exclusively through Sunrun. Sunrun is networking and monitoring the enrolled F-150 Lightning pickups as they share stored energy from June 1st to September 30th between 5 to 9 p.m. on weekdays. Enrolled customers will receive a payment based on the amount of energy shared, estimated to be about $800 over the course of the program. Now, while we're on the topic of trucks and the F-150, Ford has talked a little bit in recent months about America's obsession with big vehicles, big trucks, and the need to go on sort of a vehicle diet and embrace smaller, more efficient vehicles. Well, Liebherr is definitely not doing that. Liebherr and Fortescue partner on the world's first autonomous electric haul truck. This is a massive 264-ton BEV-converted electric truck operating at the Christmas Creek Mine in Colorado. With our teams now fully integrated, Liebherr is excited to formally announce our partnership with Fortescue to collectively develop and deploy our autonomous haulage solutions, said Oliver Weiss, Executive VP of R&D, Engineering, and Production at Liebherr Mining. Liebherr has always prioritized market-led product development, and we are privileged to be partnering with Fortescue. Our collaborative efforts will be beneficial not only Fortescue, but all customers who choose to implement Liebherr technology across their sites. As part of the development of the autonomous haul solution, Liebherr and Fortescue will develop an integrated fleet management system and a machine guidance solution. There's no acronyms there. Apparently, I know I'm reading the parenthesis, but I wrote the parenthesis, so it's okay. Upon completion of the AHS validation cycle, autonomous haulage will be deployed across all global Fortescue mining sites. And now, number one comment, first thing out of the box when we published this last night was the comment, great, we're losing more jobs to robots. Absolutely not the case. Look, there is and there has been a tremendous labor shortage when it comes to truck drivers, when it comes to heavy equipment operators, certainly where it comes to mining, especially in the United States. There is a real sense that people don't want these jobs. Now, I'm not one of these people don't want to work anymore people. I am a huge advocate of labor in all its forms. Whenever there's a labor dispute against the corporation, I'm almost always on the side of labor. And you should be too, because you're not a capitalist. You think you're a capitalist. You like the theory of capitalism. You might want to be a capitalist in the sense that you invest your money and you make money with money. But if you're working for a living, punching a clock, getting a paycheck from someone else, you're not a capitalist. You're in the labor class. Deal with it. Regardless of any of that, 
This is not a situation where people who want a job or people who want to drive these trucks and work in the mines are going to lose a job. What this is going to allow the mining companies to do is continue to expand to meet the needs and demands of the new electric vehicle reality, whether that's hybrids, plug-in hybrids, or battery electric vehicles, we're going to need a lot more minerals, a lot more stuff to come out of the ground, and we need people and things to pull it out of the ground. And if we can't find more people, we're going to need more things to do the pulling. Liebherr will begin to offer AHS to other mining customers as the company continues to expand its autonomous tech portfolio, asterisk, and it will not cost anybody their jobs. Your jobs are safe. If you want to work in construction, great opportunities out there. Six-figure incomes, definitely look into it. Now, as we talk about mining, as we close this off, you know, I like to end the day talking about energy, solar, wind, all of that good stuff. And today is no different. A 2.2 gigawatt offshore wind farm just took a big leap forward in Maryland, securing all its necessary federal permits to begin operation by the end of 2024. Jeff Grabowski, US Wind CEO, said in an email, we are now one step closer to securing all of our federal permits by the end of the year and look forward to the day we can get steel in the water. US Wind's lease area is approximately 10 miles off the Maryland coast and approximately 10 miles off Sussex County, Delaware as its closest points to shore. The project includes three planned phases and two of those phases, Mar Wind and Momentum Wind, have received offshore renewable energy certificates from the state of Maryland. U.S. Wind's proposal also includes four offshore substation platforms, one meteorological tower, man, say that five times fast, and up to four corridors for offshore export cables that would make landfall in Delaware Seashore State Park. The development and construction phase of the project could potentially support 2,679 jobs over the next seven years. That's all we've got for today, July 30th. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you heard. If you didn't, let me know about it in the comments. I will be sure to laugh at you and mock you brutally. Have a great day.